Let's see the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's time for us to look at the papers. We call it Off the Press. The papers are quite interesting, and you can, you know, predict some of the stories that make the front page this morning. Tunde Kolawale joins us this morning via phone. It's good to have you, Kolawale. Uh, Happy New Year. I was going to say Merry Christmas, but we're in 2023. Happy New Year to you, too. All right. We're sure the best in the new year. All right, then. Uh, thank you so much for making our time to be with us this morning. Let's take a quick look at the punch. The punch says PVCs, 6.7 million uncollected in 17 states. That's very, very worrisome. INEC targets market. Hmm. And we're still here talking about endorsement and what have you. 6.7. Imagine 6.7 million persons not casting their votes in all of this. It's, it's a lot. And then uh, we move away from the board caption, but we have the writer underneath. Uh, you say, INAC moves to increase voter card pickup in states and plans massive sensitization. And that should be what it should be, including political parties at this point in time. Civil society organization, everyone, uh, you know, should be at the verge where, you know, everybody's encouraged to pick up their cards because that's the only way uh, they can go ahead to... Uh, cast their vote. 14,000 people collect PVCs daily in Lagos. Uh, Yaga Africa laments poor awareness. Mm -hmm. 22 trillion naira loan to attract additional 1.8 trillion naira interest. That's what Buhari is quoted to say, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Railway debt servicing gobs 200, I beg your pardon, 246 billion. Railway debt servicing gobs 246 billion naira. And just before we move away from the punch, the more interesting headlines, China COVID-19. Federal government fears spread and 16 countries impose restrictions. I'm not sure we want to get to that point, right? And let's not even say that we're going to impose restrictions uh, just before February. You know what that will mean. Uh, again, you find why I declined to marry terrorists Commander, train attack victim is quoted to say, ASU protests as federal government withholds union dues. And you have millions bid farewell uh, to uh, the football legend Pele as he's been laid to rest. Reps won EFCC again selling asset to looters. I see this morning on the Punch newspaper. Uh, we take our attention from the punch. We take a quick look at the nation now. The nation says APC PCC obese backing by Obasanjo Edwin Clark weakens PDP. Like similar endorsement in 2019, they will fail, says uh, Festus Kiyamo. And elections or your PDP crisis widened. Marking the pro article group test strengths. I like to you Nigerians be wary of fake and be wary of fake ad hoc officials. Uh, peace targets expansion to United Kingdom, India, Israel, and orders. And we're saying let your services be smooth, you know, in home country. Why 23.7 trillion naira CBN loan must be restructured by the president? President signed 21. Point Eight three trillion naira of uh, 2023 appropriation bill into law, and uh, Tunubu deserves credit for Lagos transformation. That's what the governor of Lagos State is saying. People have argued differently that hey, what are we saying? Uh, Song Wolu is quoted to say that's on uh, the Nation newspaper this morning. Republican loses vote for Speaker. Uh, that's in the United States. That's the much we can take on the nation. Uh, let's look at another paper, and that is the leadership. The leadership says, OB endorsement, you don't owe key, you don't own key to Asarok, Atiku tells Obasanjo. You don't own key to Asarok, Atiku tells But I, I thought, you know, all of this was over. President, the vice president, once upon a time, uh, you know, back and forth. Beware of politicians who think they are above Nigeria. Tunubu tells Muslim leaders, autumn endorsement of Obi confirms crack in the G5. Where Intax will unveil choice, uh, that's a candidate soon. That's what WK is saying. 
Edwin Clark's back or bass and draw on support for the Labour Party flag bearer. And this conversation continues. Now, we still have another caption here. It says, troop kills four terrorists and recovers weapons in Kaduna. Apprehension in Imo as gunmen raise police division. It's an attack on, you know, police uh, officers across different parts of the state is really, really a major concern, especially as we inch closer, you know, to the elections. Federal government to deploy technology against terrorists in the southeast. How can these things be? Uh, is it possible? Would that yield any result? Attackers of my convoy may not. Attackers of my convoy not. IPOP says Ohakim. Uh, okay. Pension fund assets raised by 1.2 trillion naira in the 2022, uh, you know, uh, budget or plan. Economists play further boring as President Mohamed Buhari signs 21.83 trillion naira budget. Uh, this is what you find this morning on the leadership. Now, just before we have uh, Tunde Kola Wale share his thoughts, the Daily Trust is before us and he says... Nine months after resignation, Adamu Kiari, now she is seat still vacant in the Senate. Constituents laments and tackles INEC. Vacancies treated as APC's internal affairs. That's what lawyers quoted to say. I can't comment on the matter until what Okoye is saying. How ICT will shape Nigeria's 2023 elections startups orders. Oyo PDP leaders assures Atiko of victory. Fulani group backs ex vice president. Buhari signs 2023 budget, queries 1.32 trillion naira inserted by the National Assembly. And the big question is I mean, if the president finds that the budget has been parted or the National Assembly did whatever they did, why did he go ahead to sign it? Is it that we need just to go ahead and say, hey, well, let's continue with the budget cycle of January to December? These are some of the questions that are begging for answers. National Assembly gives conditions to reconsider stands on federal government's borrowing from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Or Tom Edwin Clark backs uh, Obasanjo's endorsement of OB. INEC wants on fake ad hoc staff recruitment portal. Ritualists invade Ogun community, exhume 40 scores. Too many issues. And that's it this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. I mean, let's quickly have our guest join us, uh, Tunde Kolawale. Many thanks for joining us. By the way, he's a legal practitioner. Thank you so thanks much. All right, then let's sort of, uh, which of the headline? Let's leave it very open to you now. Uh, in trust years, we went through the pages of our national dailies. Well, this year we should start um, with the endorsement of uh, OV by General Richard Conway of Africa. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of people uh, criticizing the issue of Obama for just uh, I mean, uh, supporting the OP. I've also seen uh, people like uh, Chief Adibanjo saying it was the right thing for Chief Obama to have done. That is to support OP uh, for the president to come in 2023. And the truth of the matter is that uh, we should uh, allow people to have their preferences, also campaign for their preferences as president. That is what uh, democracy is all about. The situation in which we browbeat, we shout down, we echo and then criticize individuals for having their preferences uh, in this election. Is not healthy for democracy. What is important is that we as citizens to have our PVC, and when we do have our PVC, vote for a candidate of our choice, not minding who is recommending who and who is not recommending the other person. The beauty of democracy is that all electorate or every individual out of suffrage are armed with their PVC, and then they should let their voice be heard by voting for a candidate of their choice, which is not by shouting down on that person. Other persons also have what they mean, uh, the right to decide that this person or that person is their candidate of, uh, of their choice. It shouldn't be a thing that we should criticize any, any Nigerian for. 
Mm. Well, but you know, the concept of uh, uh, endorsement is a universal concept. It probably might not be written, but we see it in even, even in very developed, you know, democracy, just like you have stated, everyone has a right to say, hey, this is who I'm supporting or this is who I want to support, uh, including yourself. But we understand, you know, where this comes from. But I'd like you to also add that of, you know, shortly after uh, the former president endorses, has endorsed Peter B, then you have another endorsement from uh, a South South uh, elder statesman, Edwin Clark. How do you mm -hmm. respond to this? Should we see more endorsement as we had, a, as we had uh, you know, close to the elections? Yeah, honestly speaking, part of the challenges we have had as a nation, or part of the shortcomings of this democracy is that the people are only shy to identify with the candidate of a choice. And I think that should not be the situation. In some other crimes, especially like in places like U.S., People are not shy to identify with the candidate of their choice. In fact, they not only go out to campaign for such candidates, they also find ways and means to really finance those candidates and so that they get into power. But here, we want to bury our head in the sand, like the ostrich, pretending that we are not uh, concerned. So the, the, the endorsement of a Kiret in Clark, in our humble opinion, is also a welcome development. The area statesmen have the right to adopt or recommend or whatever, or endorse whatever candidate of it, so it's all to endorse OP and all that. But he does not have the power to really force us to vote for OP in 2023 if actually we don't want to vote for him. The more endorsements we have, the better for us. That is the beauty of democracy. Honestly speaking, uh, we have too many times and too long and now only career politicians to decide who becomes uh, or who occupies some of these exalted offices. And that is the reason we are finding ourselves in the situation we are today as a nation, in which nothing is moving forward. But if we have the position, if we have the political will, if we have the courage to say, look, I have studied this person and citizen, I have looked at his manifesto, I've also looked at uh, what he has done in the past, and I've also looked at his corruption in data and all that. I think he can move the nation forward. He does local government chairman as a state house assembly uh, member or as a federal representative member or as a senator. Then we should seek out our name for such person and then they go out to do whatever is necessary to make sure that they get into power. But it's that when such persons get into power, some of these groups who are endorsing these people and other who also find as a lever with which to begin to hold these people accountable when they don't deliver on the dividend of democracy, on whatever manifesto that they are promised the people of Nigeria. So both as we clerk and the official capacity are on the right track for coming out openly to stick out their neck for Governor Obi and then endorse him. Other people who also have a candidate uh, who feel like I defy with any of the candidates, I encourage them to come out and endorse such candidates. Even go out in there and finance and campaign for them. That is should be, I mean, that is the beauty of democracy. Well, um, let's uh, turn our attention to the punch now. The punch says that 6.7 million uncollected uh, PVCs in 17th state and INEC is making plans, you know, to move to the markets. Uh, I'd like to ask you, are you worried about this figure? 6.7 million persons in 17th state have not collected their PVC. And of course, some days back in Lagos, we're talking about 1.6 million persons who have not collected their PVCs. What exactly could be responsible for this um, kind of uh, figures and statistics? Absolutely, I am worried. And all Nigerians should be worried. Seven million is a considerable figure. And you will not believe it that even 500 PVC can make a whole world of difference come the 2023 election. So when you, have, when you have as much as 7 million or 7.5 million people is not being collected, uh, it should be uh, a warrior, it should be a thing of contact for all Nigerians who want uh, uh, this election to go smoothly, free and fair, and for the best of the candidates to emerge at the, at the election. I should think there are a lot of problems with the distribution of uh, this uh, PVC. One is you'll find out that when you go to some of these centers, where the PVCs are to be collected and all that. Those things are not organized. 
it's a very chaotic uh, process and we say for uh, uh, gaining in, in the stamping to be able to collect the PVC. Whereas I should think, if I make us organize a war at this, they should even be able to deliver this PVC to the home address or to whatever address things that people may have uh, put down for the collection of this PVC. Why they lump the PVC and dump them at I make officers and local government centers to beat my imagination. Because apart from voting, the PVC is also a very useful means of, uh, of identification. It could also be used as a kind of an index for measuring what the population of the country is, is, is all about. But, like it has always been, Heineck has not had the distribution of this PVC the way I manage. Who are trained banners in the, in, the, in the world of the Heineck distribution uh, uh, strategy? There are too many times uh, when uh, officials know that their political opponent are strong in one particular place or the other. They find a way to... Well, so uh, unfortunately we have been disconnected, but uh, we're looking at the issue of PVC and its collection. And the fact that uh, 6.7 million persons of PVCs have not been collected because they are not owned by spirit. Human beings own them, so you could rightly say 6.7 million persons have not collected their PVCs in 17th state. Should the conversation not move uh, from you know all of the endorsement and the back and forth that we have with the political parties? Have the political parties really done enough? Because they also have a responsibility as to creating awareness and encouraging you know voters to go out and ensure that they registered at a time where registration was ongoing, and now we're at the phase where we're collecting PVCs. That should end, you know, on the 22nd, you know, of uh, January. That's uh, for 2023. So we, we really do not have time, uh, if you ask me. And it's it's quite unfortunate. A lot of persons will be disenfranchised because there's no way you're going to do this. What can be done? How far can we, you know, move this figure away and get people to get their PVCs? What what can the parties do? What can INEC do? Uh, I'm being told that we have Tunde Kalawali uh, back on the line. Tunde, thank you so much. Now, my question is, what exactly can be done, you know, to uh, create the awareness, get the people uh, to get their PVCs, make it very possible? Because just like you have mentioned, there's been several outcries, especially for Lagos, where they complain that it's very impossible, it's difficult. The process of collecting these cards are very difficult, and that's because, you know, the umpire... Uh, those who work there has made it very difficult to some extent. There are too many uh, bureaucratic process or what have you. So, but is there anything that can be done in, in how many more weeks that we have before the elections? Well, there is, uh, uh, for example, it's not impossible that uh, in some of these places they can separate the, arrange the PVC, uh, I mean, uh, alphabetically wherever those things might be based and all that. And then get some INEC officials with the assistant or local government officials and the security agencies, for example, uh, when people come to those centers and all that, if you have arranged them alphabetically and all that, you can be calling out to the names and then people will be coming forward to pick the PBC. You can also, through the landlord association, identify the streets where some of these um, PBC belongs and all that. And through the landlord association and the community leaders, get this PVC across uh, to the people who may have, uh, may, may have them. And of course, too, you also have to dissuade the politician who try to frustrate the collection of this PVC. Sometimes when they know that their political opponent is strong in one place and there is a very uh, high registration in those places and all that, they find ways and means to really make sure that this PVC don't get into the hands of these people. people who will use them and then uh, vote to get their political opponent uh, uh, elected. These kind of politicians have to be identified and then dissuaded from the uh, trade spanner into the wheels of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, And uh, more importantly, to just like you have said, there's a need to create awareness on the part of the people. Merely shouting on the social media and making us on the pages of the newspaper does not translate into getting into office our preferred uh, presidential or governorship or senatorial or uh, candidate. It is the only way we can achieve our end and objective of getting the good people into power is to relate the hand with our PDC 
we'll we'll call very early on the day of the election. Go to our different polling booth and vote for a candidate of our choice. And not necessarily making us on the social media and then uh, on the pages of newspaper and then on television uh, and uh, and the radio. The time is not too short. The lessons are coming in February. If we uh if INEC is committed to really ensuring that this PDC gets the ratified I mean to those who have been registered for them, it is still possible. And of course too, the patriotic politicians can also help by ensuring that they give logistic support to all the people who have registered for this PVC and that the PVC get to them. But we must be careful not to uh, allow a situation that we have seen some part of the country now in which politicians are buying all the PVC and buying all the I can the PVN pin number of how, the people who are How, how, for, how for, do we have, how possible? And I mean, holding, holding this PVC with a view to uh, if you put in them on the election, Kola Wale, that, that's a lot of, of that's a lot yeah. of, you know, that's a lot of statement. I mean, that's a very strong one when you say that politicians are buying PVCs. How do you buy a PVC? How is, how? Where? It, from some of the reports that I've read in the papers and all that, it's been said that in some northern part of the country, and the person who came up with this, uh, this is a community leader. Now and then, uh, active. And people are going from home to home, buying PVC from between 500 naira to 2,500 naira, and also asking people to disclose their BFN identification or um, uh, means of identification, uh, their bank identification, and also the PVN identification code. Uh, the people who raised the alarm couldn't have been doing it uh, just for mischief purposes and other. They must have had some concrete information before well, they begin to raise the alarm. Well, I, I, also I, 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 I don't know how, I, I, I can't papers. really... Tunde Kola Wale, I mean, if you look at it, to be very honest, we understand that we don't operate a very perfect system. But, you know, that's, you know, so much to phantom that um, PVCs are being bought. Let's not forget that we have the beavers, the technology that has but been introduced. And we, and we know that every, and, and we know that and we know that this technology works with the thumb, with the thumb print. So you, you can't have another person... Are going to you know the pulling boat and using another PVC. No, the way it's done is this. The way it is done is this. They buy the PVC and then the means of identification and keep the PVC with themselves. On the day of the election, those who own those PVC and what are they? The family will call them up, give them more money, and make them swear to some vote that it is this person or that person that are giving them money that they be voting for. It's not as if they are going to ask some other person to go and use those PVC and uh, to vote on the election. It will be difficult. It is the people they have bought the PVC for that they will probably add them to some like person, coerce them, give them their money, and make them to swear to some vote and all that, that they will vote for whoever may have been buying the PVC uh, from them. You and I will remember the purchase of voters. It's not a new thing. We saw it happen in Ekiti. We saw it happen in Nondo. But, but this, will, but this will be another State. dimension yeah, of it. If there's anything the to go by, that's, yeah. that's what we're saying. If this is anything to go by, because, I mean, uh, we haven't been able to verify all of that uh, information. But, however, uh, we hope that the relevant quarters, especially INEC, would look into this issue, uh, some of these complaints and this allegation that has been raised. Uh, by uh, the people and just like you have uh, mentioned looking into it because it's totally absurd if you ask me but um so moving forward now let's look at another paper uh it's the daily trust newspaper and it talks about the president signing the 2023 budget he queries 1.32 trillion naira inserted by the national assembly uh, we're talking about padding of the budget now. Why would the president go ahead to sign the budget when he knows it's been padded? What exactly um, is going on? Well, uh, the budget uh, in our own plan has become a mere ritual, an ordinary document that, uh, with your kind permission, I would say carries no weight. Uh, 
since the president, since the general Wali became uh, president, and even during the time of uh, Yaratwa and then Dr. Gulo Jonathan, we see times it has number on a yearly basis, budget are made. How many of those budgets do we strictly adhere to? Do we strictly implement and all that? You know, to the best of my knowledge, our budgets are not implemented up to 30 percent of what is contained in those uh, documents. Even though budgets are supposed to be legal documents, backed up by a law, which ordinarily should be strictly adhered to and implemented uh, faithfully. But the times without number, we find out that those budgets have become nearly trapped in this part of the world. You have also seen an issue in which it's been said that the National Assembly has a part of the budget, added a lot of things into those uh, budgets that the presidency or the deputy arm of commerce didn't extend to them. Yes, it is true that the National Assembly has the power to do whatever they can do with the budget. Uh, for example, even if the presidency sends a budget to them, they can decide under our law to petition everything that the presidency or the victim of home has to them. And then uh, put in a fresh thing into those budgets. But on the condition that whatever they are putting there is not for their own peculiar benefit. It's uh, born out of patriotism. It's born out of whatever researches and uh, uh, information that they do have their disposal. It's born out of the fact that they want the country to grow. They want to develop the country. They want the country to move forward. They want the country to have a very healthy economy. That is the only reason why, or that is one of the reasons why the National Assembly people will go ahead and think of the budget. But in our own situation, most time when they think of the budget, when they ask them to it, it is for their own pecuniary benefit, for their so-called constituency, and for them to be able to award contracts, and for them to be able to go to some of those ministries and partners and MBA to ask for kickback, to ask for contracts, based on what they have inserted into, into the budget and all that. I am not sure, I am not too persuaded, I am not too interested in whatever budget is prepared because time without number, I think that it is becoming a ritual that is never implemented. Furthermore, where is the money or where is the resources to really execute a one point something trillion budget with the situation we have in our hands today? The oil that we depend on, very little is being produced. The little that has been produced has been stolen. The ones that get into the market and all that are not selling at the price we think the ordinary nation should sell because of the war situation in Ukraine and then because of the decision of OPEC to make sure that oil prices don't go beyond a certain level. And of course, you are now aware that the U.S. is taking a lot of measures to make sure that the prices of the crude oil does not skyrocket in the international, uh, international oil market simply because they want to also use it as a weapon to cut uh, Russia from being able to wage war on um, on uh, on the uh, UK. So a lot of matters are in here. We probably will be financing those budgets, borrowing from the Central Bank of Nigeria, and then borrowing from the International Committee. Whichever way it goes and all that, this budget is never likely to be implemented uh, as strictly as the other way should be. In fact, I want to say, it is a budget of, um, of, uh, of uh, a bankruptcy. It's also a budget of a, a, a debt management, if you are permit me to say. Uh, once uh, President Buhari leaves power in May 2023, I suspect that whatever person win the election uh, come, to, uh, come in May 2023 might be coming up with a, a new or a different budget and that's going to be tailored and suitable, not just to the resources that we have in our hands, but also to meet the beginning and aspirations of the Nigerian people. Yeah, 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 you know, some people have argued that uh, the budget that we have is quite slim if you look at the population and that uh, we should anticipate, uh, uh, you know, more allocation uh, in the previous years that we will come. But it's also unfortunate, just like you have mentioned, uh, the fact that we don't have what it takes. I mean, our revenue cannot even fund the budget, so we'll be borrowing uh, to fund this budget. And if you also look at what we'll be borrowing for, mostly it feels like it's consumption because the National Assembly in its own will and power has decided to increase our allocation from 59 billion yeah. to 258 billion naira. 
and that's a lot. You don't want to even begin to consider all the factors, the fact that we'll be spending more in the cost of running governance. But it's what it is, and uh, we can only talk, like I'd say, and hope that those who call the shot will do the needful. But quickly, uh, as we inch closer to the elections, and this is not even new because we have had situations where police stations have been attacked, and now... Uh, should we be worried that there's been a lot of attack on police stations, especially in the southeastern part of the country? There's also apprehension in Imo State as gunmen raise police division. Um, Kuala Wale, what do you make of this, you know, pattern? What do you make of this behavior? And what does this mean for our elections, especially in the southern part of the country? Honestly speaking, I read in the media the pronouncement and all the other of one senior neighbor who is said to be a protege of uh, of uh, Namikano, saying that they will not allow elections to hold in the southeast. I hope that these attacks on the police stations in the southeast and the attack on prominent politicians in the southeast is not geared towards derailing the election in the southeast. I also want to frown at a situation in which policemen, in which DSS officials, in which soldiers and all that are being killed and maimed on a daily basis. For God's sake, uh, that is uh, anarchy. And uh, nobody who has his mind or his head uh, on the soldiers will support the kind of chaos and anarchy that is going on in the world. That, yes, uh, Kola Wale, we also we need can, to pay. That, we also need to take note of the fact that IPOP, over time, have said that they are not responsible for these attacks. They've also, I you know, agree. vividly said that they have no plans I to disrupt agree. the elections mm -hmm. in 2023. So, who are these persons perpetuating this evil? I agree. I agree that uh, uh, we've been having uh, discordant tools from the south. Like I said, one Nepal who is based in, uh, I think it's Finland or, or, or Netherlands, who is said to be the deputy of uh, Namikano, has uh, openly said that he will not allow him to hold him. We are there in Nigeria. I have also seen uh, the IPOP people issue a press statement saying that they do not support what the men uh, who is based outside the country is saying, that the election will not hold in the South. There is nothing possible that the factions in IPOP in which the organization may have broken into two, one in support of election holding in the Southeast and, the, and then the other faction working very hard to make sure that the election does not hold in the Southeast. You will remember even organizations like uh, the Bukwaram, organizations like ISWA, have sometimes broken into two different factions and all that. And then the different factions will be carrying out the different agendas and what have Whatever it is, it is uh, enough to start killing security people. Security people who are just ordinary people who have also gone there to earn a living by either being a soldier, by being a policeman, by being a PSS uh, official. They are human beings like us who have families who have responsibilities, who also have the right to live within the Nigerian society without their life being terminated on, uh, without the due process uh, of the law. So that should be condemned. Look at what happened to Governor Aki. He was shot not too long ago. Four policemen, for God's sake, lost their life in that attack. This kind of situation should not be controlled. And I've too many times advised the airport people that they should adopt the mantra of uh, Gandhi, uh, which is a non-violent. It is possible for the county to achieve whatever objectives, uh, or for airport to achieve whatever objectives you want to achieve, without shedding innocent people's uh, uh, blood. I also want to say, a uh, appeal to the Nigerian people, that two wrongs doesn't make a right. The campaign that the, the Nigerian security people are also carrying out in the South, it should not be the way it should be done. Too many times, the uh, youth are being killed uh, in very a uh, ruthless manner in the South. And I want to say that uh, the people in authority should emulate what happened in South Africa. When Mandela and Co are campaigning for their independence and all that, after that, South Africa, he didn't kill Mandela. They rounded him up. They tried him in the court of conscience jurisdiction. And then they put him in prison. And uh, that's something years later, 
Mandela got his freedom and then began to, 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 to and then they left his country as a president. If the apartheid regime in South Africa has been killed, all the NC officials and some of these other people who are agitating for independence in South Africa, the valley would not have independence in South Africa today. And South Africa would probably have become a white man's colony on the African soil. So wow. stop, the, stop the genocidal campaign against the IPOC in the South East. Let us organize a referendum in the South East. That is the way it should be. And then even referendum all over the country, whoever, I mean, and all the different parties who campaign in support of whatever position they hold with regard to the referendum. If the people want independence in the South East, well, win the referendum. So be it. If they lost the referendum, so be it. In places like Britain, they organize the referendum. In places like Spain, they, they recognize the referendum. In places like Northern Ireland, the friends are organized periodically to gauge the temperament of the well, people. Well, you, you have raised, you have raised valid point to as to... Um, hmm? you, 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 have point. That, uh, you have raised valid Nigeria point. Kola Wale, you have raised valid point. Nigeria is not negotiable. Tunde Kola Wale, you have raised valid yeah. point as to allowing the people... I mean, um, they have a right to say we want uh, federation. I, I, as an individual, have a right to say, I don't want to become part of this, con you know, this entity called Nigeria. Even though, you know, the, yeah, even though the unity of this entity has also, or the union, or this entity entirely has been queried because to say uh, the agreement that brought us together, the centurion, has expired. And then, you know, it's like, uh, what do you call it? They say it's an illegal entity. But, you know, that's a conversation for another day. Valid points that you have raised. But mostly, it's about the fact that we're still together as a people. And if we say we're still together, then we have the government whose sole responsibility is to ensure that the rights and that's why government exists, that lives and properties are protected, and including that of these police officers and what have you. And so it's really, you know, worrisome. It's very disturbing that you have um, non-state actors overwhelming state institutions and nothing is done it's like you know we're just moving on and it feels like it's becoming a norm everybody's just acting like nothing is going on and that's not really good so what happens especially when we know that our, our, our elections are usually um policed and militarized so what then becomes of it uh, what then becomes of the protection of the lives and people in this region where the police is you know facilities are being attacked and they're being killed who then, now, who then is responsible for protecting the lives of the people? Uh, these are some of the concerns that we have. Uh, thank you so much Absolutely. to Nicola Wale for uh, being part of the show this morning. We wish you a very thank wonderful... Thank you for having me. Yes, please. We wish you a very wonderful 2023. Thank you so you much. You have a lovely day, too. All right, then. Well, that's the size of it for us on Off the Press. We'll take a break now, and when we come back, it'll be time for us to look at our first major conversation We'll just take a quick look at the power sector when we return. Please stay with us.